Welcome back. <laughs> We're here for another exciting half hour. And, uh, you know, as much as I tried to beat him up and throw him out the door, Mr. Patrick I, Barrett is I still here with me. All right? You, you, can't, you can't lose this guy. Um, so, uh, we talked about just some general things about what's happened around town in the first half hour. And now, for the second half hour, I'd like to get into a little bit more of the specifics of two things. And if there's a little extra time Bear petition, bear petition. <clears throat> I'd like to perhaps suggests we talk about the Barrett oh, petition. Yeah. How about it? That sounds right. great. Um, where, what, where shall I start on the Barrett petition? Well, first off, uh, let's, this is a zoning petition. Yes. So It's a citywide zoning petition. Citywide zoning petition. And it is called the Barrett petition because you are not only the first signatory, that is true. but also the author. Author. Um, so uh, tell us about the Barrett petition. Well, I, I am the author, but I've also employed lots of people in the city to help me along the way. Um, this is about two years in the making. Um, the petition comes in two parts. There's part A and there's part B. Part A deals with accessory apartments. Which are? Which are what people sometimes refer to as in-law apartments or basically units within a unit for typically used for family members or to house elderly or house you know, um, our increasing population of over-educated, underemployed students. Um, is this a separate entry? No, this is a this is a this is a unit that's within enti the entirety of the existing structure. It uses typically the same ingress and egress. You can you can vary that slightly depending on how it's built. And Cambridge doesn't have a very tough definition of what an accessory apartment is. However, there is already in existence uh, an accessory apartment ordinance in Cambridge. However, the homes that that affects are homes that are thirty five hundred square feet or larger. They had to be built in nineteen forty two or earlier and they have to have 6,000 square feet of land. Now, if you can imagine... Let me just say superficially here, <laughs> putting those restrictions on something like this doesn't make any sense at all to me. <laughs> well, it, it, it zoning tells a story. So, you know, the, yeah. the, the story is whatever brought about this at need at the time, which, you know, um, I've met the previous author. She is a delightful woman. Um, and... <laughs> Um, the, the real reason why these houses, this, this was created initially was to preserve mansions in the residential A area, which is on Battle Street near here on Ave. And, um, you know, if you live in a 4,000 square foot mansion, um, you're not really building an accessory unit for grandma or for your, no. your, your son who's got that regrettable philosophy major. Um, you're doing it for basically a, a butler or a servant or some kind of person who's helping you maintain your gigantic house. Right. So a lot of municipalities... Well, maybe you just have a lot of room and yeah. you've got some... Or some regular student, income. Students are coming in yeah. so you can get a little income off. I have no problem <clears throat> with the existing accessory ordinance and I just don't think that it should be the, uh, the, the, the exclusive right of the people who live in residential areas. I think this is something that should be spread out the entire city. And the Barrett Petition succeeds at doing that. And the impetus really behind the whole idea was that we have so much space in the city that we haven't really looked at using, yet we always hear about uh, developments that are trying to either bring uh, large residential towers or they're trying to you know, rezone an area specifically for one kind of development. I think we should take the brakes on some of that a little bit and look at exactly what we already have and try to use it in the most efficient way. Right. And that's the impetus behind the accessory apartment section. Um, part B. And, we, and we're not talking really about like, you know, packing in 50 people into no. a little apartment here. We're just. Well, the population of Cambridge has gone down considerably, and primarily that's due to the fact that. Well, I know that's not entirely true. Well, well, I mean, the thing is, it went from uh, 127 down to like 70, yeah. and now it's, it's recovered. You know, it's up to. But it's not. It's not near. It's not at its peak. No, 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 no. We, we. And that's that's that, that's my point on that. Yeah. The yeah. the, but the, the people live differently. I think the. Once upon a time, we were at 127. That was because we had large families yeah. in a lot of these buildings, and then the only way they've been able to make some efficiency out of them is chopping them up and adding on condos, condos. and infill to to better use the housing. Yeah. So, and this accessory, uh, the accessory part of the ordinance only affects one families and two family houses. I want to make that extremely clear. You can't put one in a condo. You can't put one in a three-family or a four-family. Not even my three-family? Not even yours. I am not a supporter of this. 
All right, I can live uh, with it because I'm often going to. Well, the idea was to limit the scope of its of its effect, so we can see who's using it and to see how we can get more houses in. Because right now, only about 82 accessory apartments exist on the record. I'm watching all of you yeah. people on this <laughs> Um But the, the true story is that there's this has already been done. Everyone, people do it. People have accessory apartments. I've been yep. in real estate for 25 years, and I've never seen a place where someone hasn't done something interesting. Sure. In a basement or an attic or another part of the house. So really what I'm, tr what I'm trying to do with this entire petition is to bring it to light, get it legal, it. Yeah. and give people sort of a, I, I didn't use it as my argument to counsel, but like a pathway to citizenship for using your home. Yeah, using your home. And actually one of the things, one of the, what began as an objection ended up becoming a positive on this was the concern about, well, maybe you'll be putting in units and there won't be adequate ventilation and da 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 so now, actually, the discussion is seeing this is a way of regularizing things to the point where you can actually make sure that the appropriate building codes are adhered if to. If you are a plumber or an electrician in Cambridge, you have been asked, and maybe you refuse to do it, and good for you if you did, and I don't, you know, if you didn't, I still love you, have been asked to do some work in a basement where you've come down there and you said, what is this palatial apartment? Why, why is there a hot tub over here? Why, like, this, they're, they're all throughout the city. So, yeah. You know, this gives now this gives you now the ability to go go get a permit, have a building inspector inspect it, make sure it's safe, make sure it's not going to kill anybody, make sure that you have the proper ventilation, and if you don't, you can't do it. And for right. those of you who've already done it and done it illegally, now you can go to the ISD. You're not going to go to jail, I promise you, and have a, give, have some guidelines to create a space that's actually usable for your family. You can improve it and make it right. right. Exactly, yeah. and you can do it legally. You don't have to hide. No, no need to hide. Part, exactly, no need to hide. Now this Come is out. the accessory apartments. Now that's yeah. part. What's part B? Part B is for basement spaces. B for basements. All right. Now in one families and two families under the current building code, you can renovate your basement space, finish it off, from a height of six foot eight to six foot eleven in Cambridge, without incurring any penalty to what they call your gross floor area of the building. Right. So. At that level, you're allowed to finish these spaces off and it won't trigger typically what's required uh, a variance or a special permit for increasing the gross floor area of an existing structure. Because most of the houses in Cambridge are non-conforming, which means that they're already maxed out for whatever reason. Right. Um, so this petition exempts the space in that area. You now no longer calculate no matter what height it is because I, feel and so do many others and you can look at the signatures on my petition sir Wait, and, and let me interject and say that one of the most impressive things when i first saw the barrett petition was the broad range of people who signed it people from the kind of the cambridge residence line side of the political coin to yep. the uh, a better cambridge side of the political coin and everywhere in between it was, uh, it was like the United Nations of zoning supporters. Well, in Cambridge, as you well know, if you want to get anything done, you need consensus of the majority, and you need to go to the people who are most engaged, and these people are engaged, um, whether for good or for evil. When's the wedding? <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, it, it, it'd, be, it'd be silly. And as a, as a developer, it's silly. If, you, if you're doing a project anywhere, you go talk to your neighbors and see how much they're going to hate you after you're done or before right. you start. You know, in the same way that you bring a zoning petition, especially that citywide, you talk to the people who are going to be most engaged. Yep. Um, you know, new, brand new city councilor Jan Devereaux signed the petition. Right. Um, super awesome and handsome ex-CSBA president George Metzger signed it. Um, there are a whole list of people who have engaged, and it's, I wanted to show the city council more than anything that I had done my homework, that I had done the necessary, you know, hat in hand, march door to door, to let them know that these people were involved. Right. Um, but Part B exempts the basement space for one families and two families, and for all other spaces by special permit. Um, we can go into a little bit about what that the special permit requirements are, but the real impetus, the real push of this is for one and two families now, if you've got um, a basement in a one or two family home, you can go finish the space off at, six, at seven foot, seven foot two. You now comply with sanitary code, which says the space has to be seven feet. You now comply with, you know, now you're in conformance with the ordinance because you're no longer triggering a variance. And for those of you who know what a variance is, and those of you who don't, 
there's no reason why anyone should ever get a variance. They're, the threshold's extremely high, unless the topographical or soil conditions are such that you have a hardship. It's, it's nonsense, and asking people to go get it, regular people to go get it, is just not necessary. Right. For me, I love, I'll fight all day long, it sounds like a great time, but for anyone else to spend a couple of grand just for the privilege of being told no, I think is right. the wrong message to send. My, my take on the, the sort of the gestalt, gestalt of the Barrett petition is that basically it's about reasonable people doing reasonable things. Mm. It's, a, it's sort of a, a, a general fix in many respects. And in many ways, it's, it's really different than the typical zoning petitions we've been seeing over the last few years, which are all about give us more, more height, more density to do something grand or give them less density, less height so that they can't do anything. It's, it's, it's almost... Like a like a militancy about it, you know, as opposed to let's just make things work better. So it's been very refreshing to thank see you, this thank you. sort of change well, in that, tone. Well, I think that's one of the things I've been trying to let people know. And whether you believe me or not, you can believe the people who've signed the petition. When you adopt this petition, nothing changes. Nothing nothing right. visibly changes in any of these neighborhoods. All the houses stay the same house. All the you know the the the, the the character, the historical nature of things, they all stay the same. Right. Um, it's just what you're allowed to do inside it changes. And it actually allows for the opportunity to actually house people. And I imagine if it's an accessory use and if somebody mm -hmm. does derive some income from it, and I suppose that's legal? And it absolutely is. Legal? Then in fact, those the rents you would command for a situation like that aren't going to be anything near the kind of market rents you see in the and fancy brand new apartment. They're not, and I should also make it very clear that for the accessory part of the of the petition, part A, you have to still get a special permit to do this. So you have to tell your neighbors, you have to, right. there has to be a hearing. That's right. We Just, all got to be good on this. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So if your neighbor wants to tell you that, no, grandma can't live in your house, then I think they should have that conversation in a public forum. However, if you're, you know, if your neighbors are amicable, they can also voice that opinion too. And I think right. that's where zoning has really become out of control in this, in this city and in all municipalities. It's become more of a sword to attack or stop your neighbor from doing what you did, which is why the current ordinance has that 1942 caveat, because I guarantee you the person who wanted that, that first accessory unit, their house wasn't built in, 19, you know, in 1943. Right. <laughs> so <laughs> exactly. So anyway, uh, just sort of just sort of bring you up to date on where it stands yeah. is that so it went through the ordinance committee. Uh, it went through the planning board. Yeah. Planning board made some recommendations. Yeah. I think they were pretty, pretty hot on part of it. Maybe wanted to kick the can down the road on some of it. Yeah. But it went before the city council. The re committee report came to the council last night. Uh, and and uh, though I was anticipating they might either split it into parts or uh, or just kick the can down the road. It got glowing re reviews from yes. most of the city councilors, and they said, this is exactly the kind of things we should be doing. I was stunned and grateful. Right, so, so now it's it passed to a second reading, which again puts it in the queue for potential ordination yep. as early as two weeks from now, December 21st. Though the, the deadline, the, the expiration date is when? February 17th. February 17th. So the thing is, is that it wouldn't be it wouldn't be necessarily a rush to do it. They could delay it a little bit. Now, it's always a little bit of awkwardness when a new council takes over because they have to first elect a mayor. Hopefully they can do that on inauguration day. Mm -hmm. Then the mayor has to appoint committees. But the thing is, is that, uh, so that might delay things that would have to go through committees, but this doesn't have to go through committees. It doesn't have to go through a committee, and the only new councilor we are receiving would be Jen Devereaux. And Who Jen, is a supporter. Jen Devereaux is a supporter of the petition. Yeah. The, and the, the amazing thing about last night was that uh, you know, eight, of the, eight of the nine counselors gave it a glowing review. And even the one counselor who did not said very positive things about the petition. Uh, and I believe that he knows this is good work, that this is, you know, this is the product of two years of labor on my right. part. And several other people have guided me along the way that to get to something that we can all agree on. The accessory language comes directly from the state. That's not my work. That's the work of the state. And that's those their recommendations. Right. And if you look at Newton, the... Uh, um, progressive bastion of Newton is doing this right now. Yeah. Exactly the same stuff. Yep. Um, so Cambridge, if you don't want to be out progressed by no, oh, well, can't have that. <laughs> right. um, we'll so lose our luster. We will lose our luster. And Absolutely. I, 
I encourage anyone to, to, to look it up on the, um, the CDD's website. Uh, if you have yeah. any questions, you can always get a hold of me very easily. I'm always at Toscanini's Ice Cream, drinking coffee all day long. Um. <laughs> but anyway, that's where I usually bump into Patrick. All right. All right. Um, so th now there's one little small thing, which is I think Dennis Benzin asked that there be a report from Inspectional Services. Yeah. You know, just basically explain any concerns they may have. So that might lead to some modifications, restrictions, or whatever. But the thing is, is that, you know, it seems like this is a, yeah. this is the kind of conversation I wish we had on more things over the last few years. So to me, it's a sort of a promising note on an otherwise kind of a thunk of a It's It's been great. Council. And I say that every city councilor, and I mean every city councilor, has shown openness, leadership, and a, a willingness to work with me and to try to get some aspect of this and to understand it because for the most part zoning isn't their specialty either. But I have to also thank the mayor for some very kind words that he offered at, at the beginning of um, yesterday's and I, uh, meeting about the, my petition and I'm very grateful. Thank you. Yeah. Now, um, another thing I thought, you know, so are we done with the bar bar petition? We're never done with the bar petition, but I think we're moving petition. on. We are moving on here. Now, uh, there another aspect of uh, what connects Patrick and I to, on this is, is uh, we served time. We we, we served time <laughs> together uh, with a rather strong interest in the well-being of Central Square. Yes. So I serve on the uh, current uh, Central Square Advisory Committee, uh, which has been in a, in part of the ordinance going back to I think was it the late '80s or early '90s or something. Whenever it was. no, maybe it was actually a little bit later. But anyway, the thing is, is that's when we review projects and we do some other things as well. Um, and Patrick was on the 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 other Central Square Advisory <laughs> Committee, which was part of the K two C two process. Yeah, that is correct. Right. This was the C two Central Square. The part first and last time the city will trust me with anything. Right. <laughs> so that was, and that led to recommendations that came out in November of two thousand twelve, which is now over three years ago. Ugh. Kind of a sore spot with some of us. Yes. All right. Um, and, uh, you know, and Pat, how many people are on that committee? About 21. 21 people on that committee, and they came up with some very good recommendations. Again, the city, this, this is the, the black and white version, but there's a, a Central Square uh, a report that came out. The final report was issued actually a, a while later. Yes. Um, but it had lots of really excellent recommendations. Uh, maybe you could just sort of throw some of the, what are the key? The key aspects of, bullet points, of, yeah. of C2 was that it wanted to create, allow for additional density along the transit corridor of Mass Ave um, and create housing where currently none really exists. Right, so the, the incentive was really for housing development, yes. not for new office lab and oh. commercial development. It was housing. It's it was very difficult to explain zoning in a few seconds, but the current zoning right now does favor residential, but the costs a building right now and the cost of rent are like this. So this is the height for residential you have to get to match the uh, you know, same height for commercial but at a much lesser cost. So residential costs a ton to build high um, but you don't get as much bang for your buck as you do for a very low rise commercial. So we're trying to sort of balance the equation a little bit. Right. And we heard some of the rhetoric when the Mass Main uh, proposal was coming yeah. through this past year, you know, which I in many respects I, I view that as sort of like the consolation prize for the city council's failure to act on C2 is they approve the mass main petition. thinking about it as a consolation I prize, know. but that's exactly what it is. That's exactly that, exactly is. right. Um, but there, the argument was saying like, well, you know, we could and, you know, profitably build uh, a lab space or yep. an office here. Uh, for us to, to build housing, it would not be a real winning proposition. So the idea was to give them some incentives to do so. Yeah, it's... it's if, if you know anything about development in the business district, it, the business district requires that you build to a residential setback, a residential open space, if you're building apartments. The only non-conforming use currently in the business corridor are, all those resi are the very few residential units you see. So if you're trying to incentivize this kind of development, you have to start first with that caveat, which is what we did. Um, to give people some relief, similar to what, you know, go back to the bear petition, um, trying to eliminate this variance that you have to go after, this impossible threshold to meet, to do generally what people want. All right. Now, another thing that I found re incredibly refreshing, not only with the C2 process, but also the K2, that's Kendall Square process, was that they finally, you know, when people would talk about community benefit, it almost always meant a, a open space 
or affordable housing. But finally, the notion, the value of having ground floor retail in a sense of place was also enhanced as part of the discussion. So if I'm not mistaken, one of the provisions that was recommended was exempting ground floor retail from yes. the gross floor area calculation. So that basically, you know, if you build uh, that in here, we give it to you for free. You can build whatever you want above that. Um, and, you know, so we'll just, we'll get you that. So it was in, in the form of an incentive. It, it's so difficult to explain that piece because the ground floor retail is so hard to maintain, especially in a local level. Right. Um, you know, the Toscanini's or Cinderella's or even Patty Chen's Dumpling Room, they're, you know... And, and, and I Rock like how he stands up for his tenants. Oh, oh you know, their their rent is considerably lower than the banks down the street, or even I'm sure even checks cashed here or any of the other national brands that you see along the corridor. So as a landlord, you're you know, if you're trying to get the most bang for your buck, you're going to go with the bank, right? That's that's how it's, how it's often worked out. Unless you would give something to say, okay, you know, you can you can build these spaces, but you make them small. They are not as desirable for a national tenant. And you have to put in local retail. Right. Now, the retail, the retail corridor of Central Square is abysmal, um, and I mean that generously. Um, you know, the, the, it's a, it's a mishmash of this and that. We have uh, Morris Nagar's mattress district down the street, but that's about it. I think even Sleepy's has left again, and now it's an empty spot. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> as a little jab for you. No, but anyway, <laughs> that was one of the things that I liked. It was an emphasis on uh, retail diversity. Yep. Because I kept pushing that phrase into it there. And just another thing I saw when I was rereading some of this today was the proposal for trying to enhance to have some of the retail wrapping around the blocks yes. into the side streets where those are not what we call the 100% corner. That You're not going to get the best rent on that, but that means you, could, you will get a rentable space for the many places we love having, but who wouldn't necessarily be able to afford the top dollar. There's very few things that I believe and one of the things that I actually do hold on to dearly is that mixed use, meaning commercial down below and residential up yep. above, saves districts, saves the retail, the local stuff you want to save, and creates a safer, more vibrant environment for everyone who comes to it. Mm -hmm. um, which is why you know the section of Central Square where my building is at um, is a thousand times more vibrant than the area down towards Prospect and Mass Ave. Yeah. Um, no one lives down that area. Very few. There's the Homes Building, but there's a huge vacancy on that whole corridor there. It's been there for 10 years. Um, and I would argue that that is almost a direct uh, uh, contributor to some of the, what, what's a nice politically correct term to use for that? Uh, I wouldn't know. I, I know nothing the, about the, the waste The wasteland that's currently there. Right. Um, so, you know, you know, and you, and you would know the homes building story better than anyone. Oh, that was that was quite the battle. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it, it just there's a lot of good ideas in C2. It's a real shame. Um, well, you know what? The thing that bothers me more so than the specifics of them kicking this can eternally down the road yeah. on the C2 recommendations. I mean, they didn't have to adopt the C2 recommendations in whole anyway. I mean, the thing is, is that at least it got the conversation going. Yeah. One hoped. And that then, then uh, if they wanted to pass something different or just or rethink some of these things, at least put some focus back in it right now. So now we're going to enter into this citywide planning process. So now things like uh, Alewife got some special designation as like a high priority. Take care of that first. Isn't that weird? And meanwhile, Central Square, which was you know part of all of this attention three years ago, is sort of not even mentioned. So, not to correct you, sir. But there was a little thing called the Red Ribbon Commission prior to Which that. preceded the K2C2. Correct. So we, yeah. I feel like we've been planning for Central Square in mm -hmm. this latest planning study for five years, maybe more. On top of the 20 or yes. more years of other planning yeah. studies. so The uh, most talked about area in Cambridge and the least acted upon. Right. So, so here's my word to you incoming city councilors. If you want to be remembered as a real <laughs> progressive leader, <laughs> then what you do is you start off in January of 2016 and say, this will be the term for Central Square. Thank you. Thank Just you. make it happen. Just make it happen. We, you know, Dennis Carlone, you know about urban design. We want you there. It ain't Pearl Harbor, baby. It ain't Pearl Harbor, baby. <laughs> right. You know, and we want everybody get in on this. Make yeah, it happen. Absolutely exactly. make it happen. We, and I'm not talking about make it all become overwhelming and, and no, improve what we have 
provide what we are lacking and just do it right. We have a cultural di district designation that we've put absolutely nothing into. And I mean that with all due respect. The Central Square Business Association has done a very good job of trying to keep events lively in the square and the city has worked very hard. And by the city, I mean Rich Ross and his team to keep us safe and to keep some events here and to keep those events moving along. But as far as an investment on behalf of all the money that's come into from large commercial development and uh, you know the sort of encroachment of some of the bio, uh, the pharmaceutical companies on our doorstep, we've received none of that money, and that right. needs to go into our cultural district now. Right. So we can keep this place running, and we can actually have events and make it safe. And uh, you know the, the narrative of C two being this give me to development was a crock. Can I say that on TV? It, yes, you can say that. Um, and it, it absolutely gave nothing. And for right. people, for for building owners like myself, it gave you nothing. Now we're gonna we have about a minute and a half left. So it was one other thing I'm going to mention. I get fired up. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> no, the, no. Actually, the fact that you get fired up is important. Uh, tomorrow morning, Ooh. we have a date because yes, every other Wednesday is a group of people, we've been, some we've property been owners. Each other for quite Absolutely. Some time. We thought we'd announce on CCTV. There we go. <laughs> Don't tell them. Uh, so, Hi, honey. <laughs> so, so anyway, we get together. There are people from the police department. Yep. There are people from the Central Square Business Association. City departments, city electricians, people from public works, yep. uh, just ordinary citizens like myself get together and we kind of hash out things uh, about Central Square. And this is in a tradition that's been going on now for oh, how, how long? Eight years almost. About eight years. Yeah. So there's a lot of things you do, the, the average person may not be aware of is happening. Picking up trash is what we do, cleaning up graffiti is what we do. S safety and yeah. infrastructure that's is it. sort of the focus on this. So. You know, we actually work it out. We alert it, and it's, it's a very nice thing when you can Which see. was a, pre sorry to catch it was a precursor to the Red Ribbon Commission. And Absolutely. we were brought in as the safety commission for the Red Ribbon that's Commission. That's right. So, so anyway, uh, so that's been something that's been going on for years. So let there be no doubt that there are some of us who are feel very invested in Central Square, and we want oh, nothing Oh, it's a that promise that I'm never leaving. So we I never, don't. He's, he's, you're building a, he's building his house in Central Square. I'm building Square. my house in Central Square on a bed of sand that I'm going to put up steel hull underneath it it'll lake. be great <laughs> anyway we're down to our we're once again down to our last five seconds so uh, until next week this has been another edition of cambridge inside out bye